Welcome back. Today we have Amanda Abeya, who I have known for a couple of years. And you know me. You knew me like back in the day. And then you had we reconnected a couple of years ago. That's how it worked. We'll talk about that. But you are living abroad. You are an American living the dream, just fell in love, and is a ninja at marketing and sales. And today we're going to talk about how to have six and seven figure sales secrets because you've sold a lot and you've helped a lot of people. We're going to talk about marketing. You're a ninja with marketing. So welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here. It's like a full circle moment because uh, when I was just a little baby entrepreneur, like 22, 23 years old and Googling how to make money online, you're the one of the first people that came up who were talking about like money mindset. And I had no idea what you were talking about <laughs> when I was 22 or 23. And then like almost 10 years later, we get reconnected. And I was like, I know that name. I know that woman. So I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to serve your audience. That is so cool. Well, yeah. And so you've done extremely well. So tell us, first of all, let's just talk about marketing because most of the people watching this, they are, they are coaches, they're authors, they're experts, they're speakers, and they probably need some help with marketing. They need yeah. to get their word out. So what are some of your favorite tips around marketing? And then we'll get into sales. Yeah. So, I mean, are we doing for specifically they're at six and seven figures already, yes. or are we doing like, okay, so we're going to, we're going to get a little deep. Cause I could do like the basic, make sure you're talking to the right people and make sure you have your client avatar, you know, make sure you're invoking emotion, but I want to get a little deeper because when you're already at six figures, um, or even seven figures, because this happens with our seven figure clients. It's not necessarily about working harder. It's about working very smart and it's about making very data driven decisions. So what I would say is, you know, if you're at six figures, we can, you know, catch you and fix that problem and make sure everything is set up properly. And what I would say is, you know, let's set up these automations. Let's set up the data tracking. Let's make sure we know where leads are actually coming from. Most businesses don't. Let's track what content is working and what content isn't working. And then we start making data-driven decisions based on that. That alone is a total game changer. Um, you know, a couple years ago, I think when you and I had first met, I had started this transition where I was like, I'm not hustling like I used to before. Yeah. Like I just, I just don't have it in me anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> now that I you're a like ripe old age of 33. Yeah. And then also like, I just felt like there were really big changes in my life on the horizon. When mm -hmm. you and I reconnected, I was right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you were. I, I was very right on about that. Um, and I felt like these massive changes coming and I'm like, I have to change my business. Like I have to change the way that I operate internally, externally. So what ended up happening was when I started getting more data driven and more focused on systems and processes behind the scenes yes. in the business, then, you know, my business went from 80, 90% outbound sales two or three years ago to, you know, in 2023, over 30, over 60% of the business came in inbound either through referral wow. partners or through YouTube search engine optimization. So, okay. So you use SEO on YouTube. I do use SEO on YouTube. And now we have the data where we're like, oh, snap, that worked. Uh, and we also stress tested it in 2023 um, because we were traveling, moving to another country, going through big life changes, trying to get a visa, you know, like a whole stuff going on yeah. in, in 2023. So because we have that data and because we have those systems working on our behalf, then whatever time we could work in 2023 was spent doing things that are very efficient and strategic and that we know we're going to get results. Yeah. And so the data, how do you mine the data? Do you have a tool that you use, a software yeah. you use or manual? Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on what we're talking about, right? So if we're talking about like YouTube, what's working on YouTube, there's a great tool that I like called VidIQ, okay, um, which, basic, yeah, which basically like it, it, it looks at the data of your channel and basically tells you what to do with keywords. How are people finding you? How are you performing competitor research? So on and so forth. It's almost okay. like a second brain for YouTube. Um, and it's very cost effective. I mean, I think we have two brands on it right now and it costs us like 70 bucks a month. Right. So not a biggie at all. If you compare that to having to outsource this stuff, which would cost you tens of thousands of dollars a month, yep. sounds like a no brainer. Um, and right. that's worked really well for us. If it's something like 
you know, the, the, one of the things that we have to help a lot of our clients with, whether at six or seven figures, is we have to figure out where leads are actually coming from. Because mm -hmm. a lot of businesses don't know. And then what happens, especially with our six-figure clients, this tends to be more of a problem. They're like posting on social media five times a day. They're going to every networking event they can get their hands on. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're doing outbound sales. And they're just kind of running around ragged because they don't really understand where the money is coming from. Right. So how do you help them track it? Just a unique URL? So there's a couple ways that we do this, right? First things first is we have to have them look like, okay, who's paid you the most money? Who paid you the most money that you actually like? And where did they come from? So it could be that simple because most okay. people literally just have no idea. And then from there, they can usually get rid of half of the marketing stuff that you're doing. <laughs> just right? from that, just from those three questions, they could probably get half the stuff off their plate. Um, but, but, so how do you... Like you, I know you're going to say something, but a lot of people have referrals. And I know for me, the warm market, those are the folks that are really happy to pay the 25, 50 K. Yep. The colder leads are not, I don't want to call them cold, but you know, they're just newer to me, even though they might've spent about 10 hours with me. Yeah. They're not exactly, oh, I'm really, do I want to marry Amanda and spend this year with Amanda yeah. Moxley? So how do you amp up the referral marketing and the warm leads? Yeah. So referrals is good. So there's two parts to this question. So let's say they find us on YouTube. You're right. You have to warm them up. So that's where our effortless sales engine comes in. We warm them up with emails. Um, there's specific emails where we're kind of welcoming them into the community, sharing the resources, indoctrinating them, so on and so forth. Um, emails, uh, text messages, voicemail drops, because why only rely on email? That's my sales right, brain right. kicking in. I would never just rely on email if I was a salesperson. So why would I do it as a marketer? Um, and so that's the first part, right? And what we found with that is we can take somebody from completely cold to paying us for our high ticket program in about four months. Okay, four months. So it's a longer term investment. So it's a longer term thing, right? That's, now, to, Four months to, is not bad. It's not bad. I mean, we can make it better, right? I was just looking at like, there's a hole there. We can fix this. We can uptick yeah. that and we can always make it better, which is one of the reasons why I tell our six figure clients and our seven figure clients, you need an engine in the middle because then you can just tweak the engine and it gets better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. So we could take that four months to three months or that four months to two months just by so seeing. What, what do you mean by an engine? Would that be a, like a mid tier program? No. Yeah. So the engine is the automations in the middle of a business. Right. And the way what that includes, right, is email follow up, text message follow up, also voicemail drops. So they, it looks like they got a phone call. In other words, right. I think the voicemail people have to listen to voicemail. Yeah. Although that's not true because on my phone, it gives me a transcription. But I like what you're saying. Keep going. So that's part of the, the engine. That's what we'll teach our six-figure clients. We help them build that out in 12 weeks. When we're talking with our seven-figure clients, we help them build out what that looks like in their business. But with them, we're also, to your second point, part of the question about the data, we'll help them with tracking the data. Who bought yeah. what? Where did they come from? Who bought the most from you? What mm -hmm. are they responding to? So that your salespeople, when they go hire salespeople, know what to say when they call them. Mm -hmm. Yep. So referral partners is another big part of what we do to your point. And uh, for anybody who doesn't know, because I know there's a lot of confusion about it. A lot of people can't get it to work <laughs> very well um, is a complaint I hear a lot. So referral partners are just um, partnering with, for example, uh, businesses that cater to a similar audience, but are not your direct competition. So Amanda Moxley and Amanda Obeya would make great referral partners because we just covered two different parts of a business for the same audience. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you want to have, a, so would you give like a 20% commission? Um, it totally depends, right? It totally depends. We were actually just working out the numbers on that yesterday. It depends on the offer. It depends what we're driving traffic to. You know, it depends on on lots of different variables. Because if it's like a lower ticket workshop, you're probably looking at a fifty percent. If we're looking at a fifty thousand dollar build out, you're probably not looking at fifty percent. <laughs> right. Right. You know, so it depends. Right. right? It depends um, on what it is that we're working on. It depends on the offer. Um, and that's actually something we were working out the other day for 2024. Like, what do these numbers actually look like? Because that's another area where people get tripped up is they're giving like out way too much in commissions. And then there's like almost no money left for them. So it's a formula every business has to 
basically figure out for themselves, depending on what they're doing. Yes. Um, yeah. Good. People so then, really, I want to stress this. This is how I started my business is a lot of referral partners because you're so warm to them and they have already built the trust factor. So I have, for example, I had a client or a, a, a partner who was a relationship coach and I was a health coach and her clients wanted to have their best body ever. And I helped them get their best body. And then they would fall in love with their soulmate. So they would be the person right. And at that time, and I got the best referrals from her. Yeah. One of our best referral partners right now, especially for our, those seven figure clients is a sales recruiter because she helps yeah. people find salespeople, but if they don't have their systems in place, she can't hire salespeople for them. Right. Exactly. So, so you yeah, help them get their so. systems. So th those of you watching, like who shares your ideal client and they've already built a trust factor with them where they're like, oh, thank you. I'm so glad you know someone because they don't want to, they don't trust the people they see on the internet yet. Unless you, they go through the four month warm up sequence. <laughs> and the thing is, the reverse can happen too, because every other day I get DMs of people looking for salespeople. I don't want to be a sales recruiter. I have no interest in doing that. Okay, well, now I have somebody I can refer you to. Yep. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. Now, the thing with referral partners is a lot of people will tell me, how did you, like, I mean, I've gotten crazy results from referral partners. I've had 300 leads come to me in a day. Woo! from one referral part for one referral partner that. sending one email yeah uh 30 of the revenue a little more actually in 2023 came from referral partners and again while i'm traveling while we're figuring out where we're living mm -hmm. while we're figuring out a visa while we're going through all these life changes it can't while we're renovating a house and couldn't really work that right. money was still coming in so yes but one complaint i'll hear is a lot of people can't get results like that to which I have to say a few things. Number one, I have a free guide for you. You can download it below. We're going to give Amanda her, her custom link, but it's my referral partner guide. It'll walk you through the exact eight step process I use to build a network of over a hundred people and get results like 300 leads in a day. It's already done for you. That's but amazing. I mean, do you know how much like for, I use Facebook ads and we, we just to get people perspective, we, we pay about between five to $15 per lead. Yeah. So this play is way better. Okay. Do you use Facebook ads? Uh, not yet. Right. So we were testing everything kind of organically first in 2023, because yeah. that was a big shift, you know, and I've used Facebook ads before with specific funnels, but I was like, no, I need to shift. And when I was working with our mutual friend, Angela, the reason this whole engine concept came to be was because we were in a coaching session one time and she's like, you're putting too much of your identity in your business. You need to look at this like it's a car. Yeah. And nice. I was like, and I was like, oh, snap, it's an engine, right? Because if something goes wrong with the car, you think it's the engine or the brake light, or maybe it needs gas. You don't make it about you. I was like, oh, you need a machine in the middle of the business doing as much work as humanly possible. And then yeah. all you have to worry about is filling the top of the machine. Yes. Well, that makes everything a lot easier. Right? Uh, so many people are wrapped up in their identity around their business especially in sales. Like if yeah. you're selling and you don't make the sale, then you novice people will take it personally and feel bad, rejected, yeah. unworthy, all their wounded child stuff will come up. I, I'll speak from experience. I've had that before. So Thank I'm you. loving this. It's a vehicle. It's just a play. It's a, it's a transportation unit. <laughs> I like that. It's a transportation unit to money. And the thing is that once yeah. you have that engine in the middle, then it starts becoming a math problem, right? Because then it's like, okay, if I want an output of Y, I need to put an input of X. Yeah. You it know, is all about numbers. It becomes all about numbers and it simplifies everything. And then what we find with a lot, when we started testing this for me, I slashed 84% of my workload that I was Woo! doing. 84%. 84%. Well, because I'm a sales, I'm a salesperson. I'm a trained salesperson. I was used to reaching out to people, doing the phone call, doing the text message, following up seven times. That's what I know how to do. So are you doing now using AI to, for this process or what? This we you just, got, that was a dro mic drop, yeah, right 84%. Now, yeah. Right now we're just using keep, right? Cause we haven't found anything that could quite do the data tracking that keep can and the automations at the same time. People are always like, what's the best CRM? I'm like, it doesn't freaking exist. <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> That's why yeah. we have to do audits to figure out what you want, what you got going on and where you're trying to go so that we can make a tech recommendation. Um, but 
yeah, right now it's just Keep, formerly known as Infusionsoft. Uh, my partner has been a certified partner for Keep for 15 years. I've had it for 10. Um, yep. Another problem that we find with a lot of people actually is they have tech. They just don't know how to use it. That, yeah, for real. So, so I've, had, I've had a confusion soft for ten, over 10 years. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah, I have a my, someone on my team that's a professional like your partner. That was smart. You, you partnered up smart, man. I did. Um, he did I too. Did. But... I, I did. Yeah. In 1999, when uh, John, God bless me with John, I, the, the internet wasn't even here. Dang it. I didn't, I didn't write the, I didn't bring the tape all the way through. Okay. So using automation to keep, okay. I'm loving this. Keep going. Yeah. So Think of your well, business so, as a vehicle. But yeah, boom. It's, it's a machine. That's all it is. It's a machine. So for example, now that we have those automations done in the middle, we have the data, for example, right? We just didn't have data before 2023, you know, because we were just experimenting, stress testing, throwing stuff against the wall kind of stuff mm -hmm. when we had time. But now going into 2024, I'm like, okay, so if I got 30% of my revenue on YouTube and I did not spend 30% of my time on YouTube, that probably needs to tell me I need to start pumping out a video a day on YouTube. Right. Because I remember when we met up a year and a half ago or so, you were going heavy on YouTube. Yeah, because I was testing it. Yeah, I'm doing it too. Hello, yeah. we're on YouTube right now. Hi, testing <laughs> YouTube. Let us know I in the comments. Okay. I don't know if it was going to work or not. I was testing it. Now I know it works. So we can pump more into that. Referral yeah. partners, same thing. It was a giant experiment. All I was trying to do was work smart instead of hard. Because most of us are trained into working hard. Um, now we have the time. We have a referral partner network built. We know YouTube is working. Um, so now it's like, great, Amanda, it's back on. Oh, we're not traveling around all over the place, at least for a little while. You know, moving to another country, we're a little more settled in 2024. Um, you know, so now it's like back on podcasts, back to creating content. And the thing is, I have nothing else to do because right. most of it's been automated. Right. So then I can market five, six, seven times harder than the average person because I built that machine. And then we just track the numbers mm -hmm. in the machine and then we just make it better and better and better. Yep. Yes, that, tweak, tweak, tweak. Tweak, 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 right? And that is when you start having a business that is a lot easier to run, is way more sustainable, is way less work, and is way more fun. Yes. Okay, so you decrease your workload by 84%. Yes. Tell me, in terms of, tell me a little bit more about your YouTube strategy, because there's a lot of people, what's your, how, so you're getting clients from YouTube organically. Yeah. organically. Tell me about that. Yeah. So with YouTube, this is actually something we're starting to teach in our effortless sales engine program. I was literally just doing YouTube research like two days ago. So it's top of mind. So essentially what you have to end up doing, and, and I'm glad this is actually coming up right now. This is a really great example. Um, Cause sometimes what happens with YouTube is people aren't really clear, clear on the search engine optimization or their messaging. I will give you a perfect example um, of why our YouTube is working. So we started a second brand last year, mostly for fun, but because we were also getting a lot of questions about what it's like to live overseas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I think we need to start a whole other channel for this because these questions are getting really specific <laughs> and they have nothing to do with the first business at all. But I'm mm -hmm. more than happy to answer these questions because my DM is flooded with them. So here, one thing that we did is we knew that our audience was mostly going for that brand was mostly going to be Americans, Canadians and Europeans who are interested in moving overseas. Okay. Americans, Canadians and Europeans use the term expat. Right. The rest of the world is going to call them immigrants. And I actually think they're right. I just immigrated to Mexico. I had to go through right. the same translation process as everybody else. Side so note, you didn't like go through barbed wire. You didn't swim across. You, no, no. you went in legally. Okay. Side note, yeah. just checking. No, just side note. No, 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 no. Had to go through. Mexico is actually much more intense about the immigration than the U.S. is. It's kind of ironic. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> After seeing both sides. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. 
no, no, no. I had to like apply for a specific visa. I had to fly to Las Vegas because it was the only place that had an appointment. Wow. I then, then they're like, hey, because you're not a resident of Nevada, we need this other paperwork. So I'm running around Las Vegas trying to find this extra paperwork. Then they send it in. I'm approved in 20 minutes. Thank you, Jesus. But then yes. I have, when I come back to Mexico, I had 30 days to actually go to the immigration office and just file some paperwork and actually get my residency card. So right. Like, I have to like We're go here. We just let them in. Like, yeah, let yeah, them in. That's a side note. Keep going. Yeah. So it's, you're there. It's really interesting. You're, you have a, you have a niche market, and I know we could go off on that because I know that your your family is actually from Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. So you your family escaped communism and came to the U.S., which is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And then ironically, yeah. like there's, it's interesting. Well, this is what the other brand is for. A lot of people, the Americans, the Canadians, the Europeans are interested in non-Western countries like Latin America or Eastern Europe or um, Asia, because ironically, they feel like they get more freedom in those countries than their own countries to that wow. point. <laughs> right. Anyway, the, my, the dollar gets stretched a lot. Yeah, the dollar more. gets stretched, yeah. right? It's like the ultimate life hack. And then there's other yeah. hacks about taxes and things. Anyway, we had to start a whole other brand just for that because it's right. such a niche topic and it, it, there's so much to talk about. And so we did. But one of the things, right? And we actually got in trouble for this on, on TikTok. We pissed people off in the first week of nice. we were just testing it out and they're like you're not expats you're immigrants and i'm like yes i agree with you we are immigrants however the audience that this is for is not googling how to immigrate to another country right it's they're expat. googling american expats in mexico they're googling expat community in guadalajara they're googling mm -hmm. how to be an expat so I have to speak to the language of my audience, which is a big yes. mistake a lot of people make. Good, bad, indifferent, doesn't matter. That's just how they talk. Right. No, That's no, the currency of the communication. No, the okay, currency. Okay, so you started, you so you got in trouble on TikTok, you took a stake, and you're like, this is who we are. And then so is it your yeah, building that personal brand. So now your YouTube is from your coaching business or more from your expat business we're running both right now yeah so we're running both right now but what's fascinating about the whole thing and and this is where the engine starts getting fun right we just replicate the engine for the second brand and we can sell the same offers just from a different entry point and a different angle right makes sense because really then, that's the gateway that's going to help them live abroad yeah Exactly. It's just, it's and, and, and this has a lot to do with YouTube and, and just marketing in general is like people muddy their message a lot. So like, for example, if I had turned to make money, your honey, which has been about marketing and sales and money and business and systems for a decade. And suddenly I just turned everything into expat content because that happens to be a part of my life. That would make no sense. It would muddy the message. Can I mention it? Can I bring it up? Is it a part of my life? Yes, but I'm not about to go on that podcast or that YouTube channel and start answering a question like, hey, can you have American citizenship and a Mexican residency at the same time? Because it makes no freaking sense for the business. Right, right, right. I can start another channel that's specifically for those things and those channels or it's just another entry point into the machine, yeah. just from a different angle. It makes total sense. And so- yeah. When you're driving, so do you do calls to action to book a call or to your freebie? Like, what is your strategy yeah. on YouTube to get these leads? 30% of your business came from YouTube organically. Organically. Yeah. So right now we're just doing a lot of downloading free guides and that seems to be working. And then, like I said, yeah. they get in the engine and it takes about four months. What's really interesting is we have a client in our effortless sales engine program right now that that's how she found us. Because again, we track everything. We know where everybody came from. You know, so right. we know what's working in keep. Um, you're tracking it in keep in keep. Yeah. If you need help with that, we can help you figure it out. Um, yeah. Yeah. But basically, we know where everybody's coming from. And then we actually started tracking all her behavior. So not only did she find us on YouTube, she was being worked by the engine for four months, you know, went through all the resources and indoctrination. And then she saw us on two webinars that we did for our referral partners. Wow. So by that time I'll she was in the call, it was done. It was a done deal. Like <laughs> right. She's like, you're my people. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. 
omnipresence. But the thing is, it's very difficult for people to be omnipresent if they don't have those systems backing them up. And that's what I experienced two or three years ago. I was starting to have six figure sales months and I was like collapsing behind right. the scenes because I didn't have these systems set up. I didn't have the yeah. support set up, not to the degree that I do now. I didn't understand the concept of leverage, which I know our mutual friend, Angela, it's one of her favorite words. Mm -hmm. I didn't freaking understand that. I just knew how to work hard. Right. And work hard you did. And work and, hard and I did. This is awesome. So in the engine, we're talking emails, nurturing, voice clips, uh, text, SMS. And then do you bring them back to your social so they can like follow you yeah. around the world? Yeah. See my TikTok, see my YouTube, and then the see downloads. See my TikTok, see my YouTube, connect with me on LinkedIn. Literally last week, we had somebody who hit the engine first email. I say, connect with me on LinkedIn. She sends connection requests. You know, she sends a message, boom, I got a lead right there. Yeah. And you're getting the leads from YouTube as well. YouTube and referral partners, also social media, right? And and mm -hmm. we weren't really heavy on social media last year because we just couldn't be with everything we had going on. But now you're going to love this. We're doing an experiment. And between all of our accounts, we're pumping over 20 pieces of content a day. That's good. Now, do you automate that? well we automate the scheduling of it right or there's pieces of it that are automated or there's pieces of it that we use ai in order to help us do better i mean i'll give you an example right now right we're having this interview i'm in i'm literally recording myself having this interview right now i'm yeah. going to put it into a tool called opus which is an ai AI What's it called? Uh, opus i think opus.pro opus opus yes Opus is going to take this video file and find 30 to 60 second clips and add a captions to it automatically. Yeah. I use uh, video AI. I've heard of that one. We have, but we've been using Opus for a while. We have like a ton of credits on it. So we're just going to keep using it, but we're always testing new ones. I love it. Yeah, exactly. So then you're getting the content. Now, where, where do they get fluent? Cause I know some of your programs are like 50 K. I know you do equity deals. So where are you finding premium, premium, primo? Where are you finding the premiums? Are they on TikTok? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Instagram, Facebook? The YouTube? primo, like primo top of the cream of the crop yes. type stuff, referral partners. Referral. Yep. Because of the trust. Because of the trust. And because at those levels in business, no one's going through a funnel. Right. Yep. They're not like inside a funnel. They're like a white glove connection. This is my sister. They're running a $3 million accounting firm. They're busy. Yeah. Yeah. They don't even understand this world. Like they know they're right? in it, but they don't understand enough of it to be in your funnel. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Got it. This is so good. So tell me then, okay, besides referrals, so where would be like the mid tier? Where are you finding the mid tier? And then we have to get some sales strategies. Then we got to wrap yeah. this thing up. Uh, Mid-tier, I mean, even high ticket, it's off of YouTube. It's usually a much higher quality lead than just mm -hmm. Facebook, right? Or right now I'm testing between like Facebook and LinkedIn. We're constantly testing stuff because we're yeah. just obsessed with this. Um, and it's fun so for us. So, so the play is you're leading with value, leading with free downloads, giving tons of massive content, 20 pieces a day, testing it. Then they get into your machine. Then they get into and then you're bringing them back to all of your socials. Yep. Done. Okay. So once you have someone and they're hot and ready to buy, I know you're a sales master. So give us a few tips around being a sales ninja. Um, I'm going to have a different answer than I've had before. Okay. I can give you some sales stuff, right? But one of the things that obviously makes sales a lot easier is if your marketing runs like a machine, because yeah. at that point, it's basically collecting a credit card. So it makes it a lot easier. You've already pre-sold them. You've already dealt with their objections up front. Mm -hmm. the right. other thing the other thing but I'll, I'll add other parts to it right because okay. someone may not have that all figured out yet we can help you don't worry if you don't yes. have that all figured out yet I mean I was having almost a seven-figure business without all of that um and I think stressful you know, though yes very stressful um but one thing I would say and and this has to do with marketing too because we'll see this with a lot with our seven-figure clients and six-figure clients one of the things that people are doing typically is they don't collect enough contact information to be able to follow up with people enough and in different ways. Okay. Now, this is a marketing thing, but it's also a sales thing. 
It's a sales thing because salespeople like myself know that if you want to get a hold of somebody, get everything, get the email, get the phone number, get the secretary's number, get the mailing address. Like you get every freaking point of contact you can to get in front of this person. But for some reason in this online marketing, online business world, people weren't doing that. They were only asking mm -hmm. for emails. So now what's happening is they're getting screwed because Google and Yahoo have all these new requirements for email deliverability. They can't yep. get people to click through like they used to. Um, right. They have no idea how to maintain all that stuff and they're losing out on sales mm -hmm. because they don't right. have all this extra contact information and they don't have these different points of follow-up. That's usually a huge problem we have to solve for our, whether I was training them like on how to do sales manually mm -hmm. or even now where it's more marketing systems, it's that same concept of you constantly have to follow up with people. You have yep. to be omnipresent. The technology yep. just lets you do it a lot easier. True. That makes sense. So get all the contact. So how can we get in contact with you? And how, how can we get we... in contact with me? Well, best yes. way, if you want to see this engine working, <laughs> yes. download the free guide. If you want to see the engine working and you want to learn how to build a network of referral partners that send you hot business every single month, then download our referral partner guide. Um, I'm going to get Amanda a specific link just for her, which is why I'm not saying a link right now. And here's why. Okay. Can I give the behind the scenes of why I'm doing that? Because yes. we make really good referral partners. So obviously I'm going to give you a link. So I know where the lead came from. And then I know and be like, Hey, Amanda, <laughs> tracking we right there, do something together <laughs> for real. That's great. Okay. Wow. Everybody watching just Give her some love. I hope this was valuable for you. Give her some love in the comments. Um, and I, you're on YouTube. So wh what's your YouTube? Uh, Make Money Your Honey. You can also find both of us on Entrepreneur Expat. You can find me Facebook and LinkedIn are like my top ones right now. So you can search Amanda on Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay. Woohoo. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Thank you, Amanda, for being here. And everybody watch the next video, download her guide, and I'll see you in the next video.